Good morning, and welcome to Exiles TV. Kevin Gallagher, Bill Perfita, so glad to have you along with us on this Thursday morning. Looks like we have the makings of a nice day in Baton Rouge. Yep, today is the 12th, if I may, if I, uh, I ask for personal privilege for just a moment. Uh, today is the 12th of November. Uh, today would have been my father's 90th birthday. And uh, I just want you to know, I know you're out there somewhere, Dad, and uh, love you a lot, and I miss you. You think he's streaming us live? Uh, yeah, they have excellent streaming. You, know, you think you think St. Peter and, and, and all the others are, will allow us to be streamed into heaven? He heaven's got 5G, and it's free. <laughs> So, <laughs> your, your dad was Don, right? Donald. Donald, Donald E. Gallagher Sr. And he but, was a veteran. Uh, he was a, we he talked was about that yesterday. A U.S. Army veteran. He served in Berlin during the air, airlift. He was a little too young for World War II, mm -hmm. but uh, the draft was still in place, as you well know. And uh, the, when he was drafted, they sent him to Berlin, where he was occasionally under fire, but not. He was not in a combat unit. It was. It was a dangerous place to be. Mm -hmm. um, so somebody told me yesterday. Uh, someone who likes the fact that we're very, very strict on how news is reported and if the sentences make sense and the spelling and all that. And they said, you ought to do that as a regular, as a regular se segment. Well, I thought we did. Uh, well, anytime we notice something, we tend to point it out. We don't have enough time. We don't care who we embarrass or so insult. Much of it. <laughs> so here is, here is my pet peeve for today. All right, what do you got? Everybody is reporting this exactly this way. Okay? They're saying, you know, that arrest, an arrest has been made on that uh, verbal abuse and physical abuse at LSU Lakes of the, the white male. And yeah, I saw, the, I saw the story on Channel 9's website. Channel Just 2, Channel 9, they're all reporting it. They're saying he is a doctor at Our Lady of the Lake. Not the proper syntax. Because they have doctors of nursing over there, they have PhDs that are researchers. They, they, he is a physician. That's what you mean to say. Mm -hmm. He treats patients at Our Lady of the Lake Children's Hospital. He is a physician. And if you want to get really, he was a pediatrician. Yeah. At Our Lady. Of He's the actually Lake. a pediatric emergency specialist. Uh, and by the way, uh, the doctor whose name is um, Dr. Shane McKinney. 54 years of age, has been placed on leave mm -hmm. by Our Lady of the Lake pending an investigation. So, and we still, and we still don't have any details of what happened. Yeah, we have, we, we need some context, but that, we talked about that yesterday, but I, I'm, I'm Well, I, if there was a witness, then why don't we have an eyewitness? What, no one with the TV station or anybody talked to this witness and said, what'd you see? I don't, I don't know, apparently not. Apparently, the, 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 the story was that there's a guy, and now he's been arrested. Uh, the witness is the one who provided the photo that allowed him to be identified. Yeah, yeah, but we don't know if that witness saw the incident or merely somebody said, hey, man, stop that guy. And so, at least I got a photo. Yeah, we don't have context yet. Well, we're going to get context now, though, because apparently there's going to be... A trial. He's yep. been charged. The charge is, again, simple battery for Dr. Shane McKinney, 54 years of age. He's accused of verbally assaulting and punching a, uh, a black woman, a female Southern University student athlete, mm -hmm. uh, on Dalrymple Drive as it uh, snakes its way along yeah. uh, the LSU Lakes. The LSU. But again, this, this thing where everybody, uh, you know, Channel 9 has been doing this, and I think this is their consultant doing it. Everybody's a leader, you know. It's not an administrator or an elected official or, I mean, it's leaders. Leaders in Ascension Parish. I've been to Ascension Parish. There are no leaders there. <laughs> Stop. But only followers. Uh, well, I know what you mean. Instead of, instead of referring to the, the people up at the state capitol as lawmakers. That's right. Or uh, legislators. Or, or representatives. Or representatives. And, yeah. uh, they call leaders. them you know, state leaders. It's, it, it's not up to a news organization to make that determination. Mm. Individuals. Some people would tell you news organizations are making all kinds of determinations these days that they maybe shouldn't be doing. Individuals Bill. <laughs> should decide whether somebody is a leader or not, and they should. That's a personal decision. Uh, but, but you know, they, they they do this all the time. Yesterday, it's like he's a doctor in Our Lady of the Lake, and of course, I'm saying there. Doctor, what? Do you do you mean he is a physician? Because 
Arlington Lake has a lot of people that have doctorates. You know? Oh, yeah. he's a, why, why didn't you say physician? You know why? Because most of these kid reporters can't spell it. That's why. <laughs> P -P -H -Y D O C T O R. <laughs> D O C T O R. <laughs> Doc here. Uh, you know, I, I, Bill, to some extent, I think you're splitting hairs on the use of the word doctor or physician. Well, but, you know, when it's someone that's in a large organization like that, again, I go back to general knowledge. You should have, if you're a reporter in Baton Rouge, general knowledge about the largest healthcare facility in the state of Louisiana. Did you know that? Arlington mm -hmm. Lake. You should, oh, yeah, I did know that. You should have general knowledge about Dow about Exxon Mobil, about the legislature, where there are two leaders, the House Majority Leader and the, and the Senate Majority Well, leader. there's the Speaker of the House yeah. and there's the President of the State Senate. Yeah, but you, but you get a leader ta title with those. In, it, it, but well, the leader roles, yeah, are, they're, they're, that's, you know, that, that, that's not the leader of the chamber, right. it's the leader of the party the in the chamber. The party. Yeah, and, and again, it's not, it's not everybody who's there. And, if you're going to go out and and it has a connection to Our Lady of the Lake, or Baton Rouge General, or Woman's Hospital, and you're going to write it down, you need to say, wait a minute, there are a lot of people with doctorates walking around these facilities. Is he a PhD researcher or laboratory supervisor? Is he a PhD in nursing? Or is he a physician? Oh, well, what you mean to say is physician. So but don't write what's, doctor. But dude, what's another word for physician? If you were on Family Feud, 100 people surveyed, top four answers on the board, give me another word for physician. But see, there's no reason to have another word. Bing, show me doctor. There's no another <laughs> word. There's, there's no reason. You're supposed to write clearly and properly in American English to be understood. I said, what kind of doctor? I, I immediately went to... Well, but you and I do, I think, we, we, have that, we have that way. When we read news, we're looking for what's missing, not what's there. <laughs> well, the problem is, you and I, and maybe a few others, I, I think Clarence would, would come in on this, we would like to see it done properly. Unfortunately, I don't think their news editors and news directors do. Well, some would say you get what you pay for. It's well, time to take our <laughs> time to take our cheap first break good, of the hour. Good ain't cheap. When we come back we in a moment, be really bad. <laughs> let's talk about cancel culture and the latest victim of cancel culture, whether it's a self-inflicted wound, maybe someone from right here in Baton Rouge. We'll talk about it next on Exiles TV. Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time.
are back with Exiles TV, Bill Profito Ovahanda, and I am uh, Kevin Gallagher. The cancel culture. You know how it works. You say or you do something that reaches a public venue, a lot of, a lot of uh, pairs of eyes and ears uh, absorb your comments, and your comments weren't exactly proper. Next thing you know, you're canceled. Whether you own a business, you've got a television show, uh, and it works both ways. I've seen, I've seen the, the society go after people who you think are you know, on the right, on the left side of things, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, so it's not just something that's reserved for um, uh, the conservatives I, I, or I, things like that. I but know the individual you're about to uh, come out with. and uh, I'm just swiping here. big on self mm -hmm. wounds. Maybe. Hmm. Let me swipe. <gasps> Look. Greg really is the go auto guy. You know, no, you have to do it this way. Now, <laughs> now, no. maybe. maybe. That's a cute. Yes. It is a co cute commercial, but every time it's on, even though it's a cute commercial, I ask myself, what the hell does that mean? He really is the go auto guy. Well, and, and that commercial is old. That, that's about an eight year old commercial. Look, so I met uh, Greg Tremontine. Uh, Tremontine. Many, Tremontine. I see, I've only met him the one time. Mm -hmm. uh, he seems like a good guy. He made a very good impression on me. Uh, but he is the, uh, uh, an earnest individual, and uh, apparently, like a lot of us, he's gotten drawn into these social media arguments <laughs> with people. You know, well, uh, whether you support hey. the current president or whether you support a regime change, and, and people feel real strong about it. I got his out. I got an out for him. He, uh, like everybody else, can't spell. He called her. H-O-E called her a long-handled garden tool. That's right. I refer to her as a garden tool. What a useful device to have. Yeah, very handy. Everyone In should have one. Calling out the weeds of federal <laughs> government. <laughs> he, he did. He uh, gets crucified he did. and spelling is awful. Uh, this, is, this is the quote from the social media post. I think it was on Facebook where he was getting into it with somebody. And he said Trump uh, was, Trump was doing it for all the right reasons. He loved this country. Uh, it was in trouble, and he wrote, he doesn't need this, unlike power-hungry Joe and the hoe. <laughs> now, as Bill pointed out, he does spell hoe, H-O-E. That's which his out. Establishes it firmly as a garden tool. Yeah, a very handy Whereas, garden tool. Whereas, I think if you're going to use the euphemism, it should be apostrophe H-O. Yeah, hoe. Apostrophe H-O. You know, hoe. Like, hi-ho, hi-ho. But, ho. of it's course, work we go. because he likened the apparent vice president-elect to being a woman who sells her body for money, uh, there's a backlash. And um, of course, this is a guy who's asking everybody to well, and, buy and, his product. And a big part of buy his, car insurance from a me. A big part of his book of, pro, uh, of product, many of his customers are African American mm -hmm. because he does provide very reasonably priced insurance to members of a community that may not have the best credit ratings, uh, yeah, you know, maybe live in an economically depressed situation, maybe have uh, driving records that you know would cost you more in premium at a Liberty Mutual, let's say. So um, yeah, the and by the way, they they happen to love Kamala, just in case you hadn't noticed. Yeah, um, she it cannot be argued. She is immensely popular with people who vote Democrat. Uh, and some people who vote Republican, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I've said for two years, watch this woman. She has got something going on, and uh, she, she's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. um, the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus is giving the governor a harumph. Here's a quote from them. If this is the level of respect he shows for African-American women, our thought is that everyone of great conscience, all people of color, specifically women, should look at this company and decide whether they are being respected. He really did shoot him in, himself in the foot, didn't he? Other members of the Democratic caucus in the House of Representatives here in Baton Rouge say it's unacceptable, inexcusable, and appalling. And from Mr. Say it again, Tremontine? Tremontine. Tremontine. I'm sorry, Greg, if I'm, it's just a name. Sorry, right. you, you probably won't you're, have to talk about it much more after this. You're, I, I don't, you know, it's like you're the only person I've ever seen with that name, so I'm, it's new to me. I'm sorry. It's Greek. Oopa. Okay, Tremontine. Um, this is from Greg. He says his words were obviously inappropriate. But now I ask myself, quoting him, why did I think for even a second that this is something to express? I have to be honest that I was caught up in the deep political divide and the toxic rhetoric that this country has been living in for the past several years. My words were hurtful. I sincerely apologize. This is my wake-up call. 
<laughs> I got to tell you, I've been right where he is. I've put stuff out there that I've gone back a day or two later. Whether it was, you know, and usually with me, it's not my own post. Mm -hmm. It's I get involved in somebody else's post, and I make a comment. And sometimes it's not wholly inappropriate, but it's beneath me. So I will go back and take it out. Just delete it. It's like if. So that those who haven't seen it yet don't have to. But you know, I I I, I put stupid stuff on Facebook all the, the time. The idiocy! You never commit anything to print that you that might come back to bite you in the butt later. Not a text message, not an email, for damn sure, not a social media post. Right. And you know what that's all about? That's all about ego and stupidity mixing. You know, it, it's it's like the, the pilot error accident. He ran out of altitude, airspeed, and ideas all at the same damn time. Guilty as charged. Now, all I can say for myself is at no time have I likened Kamala Harris to a prostitute. Well, you, you've been very complimentary about her over the years in, in terms of her political You know, rise. they talk about, everybody knows about the Willie Brown thing, which, and she wound up being the state's attorney general, you know, but... Um, you know, and say, so she slept her way to the top, blah, 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 blah. I don't think one affair with one guy is sleeping your way to the top. Well, no, and he certainly wasn't anywhere near I the I think top. one affair with one guy is really, really bad judgment on one occasion. Uh, and I haven't heard a lot of allegations that go, well, yeah, me too, man. Yo, yeah, she was awesome. I haven't heard that from a lot of different Well, folks. I mean, and Jesus, uh, we, we have presidents of the United States, past and current, who talk openly about all their affairs. Yep. Bill Clinton. John F. Kennedy, the same. So, I will judge Kamala Harris on her policies but and her support of policies. I don't understand why anybody would do this. I do not. I mean, he has got a business to protect. A vast, uh, Gary Chambers is correct. A vast number of his customer base are African Americans. And why would you even want to post? Why would you commit it to writing? Were you drunk? He, you never know, he might have been, but he made a huge mistake. But it's the kind of mistake that outs a certain type of thinking mm -hmm. that I think African American people will, that will, that will ring see, in there and say, the, see, well, he made question, racist comments about the first, you know, the, 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 uh, the vice question, president. The question will always remain because is this really the way he feels or is he now just apologizing because he got caught? No, I got to tell you honestly, though, as far as Go Auto is concerned, if it's a decent product, the coverage is good. They haven't tried to, you know, they haven't tried to welsh you on a claim, and you and and the premiums. That's got nothing to do with Greg himself. You realize that, don't you? That's a business. Mm -hmm. It's a business entity. It's it's not like he's writing your policy, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, all I would say is maybe, maybe you try to consider his sincere apology, or maybe you don't. It's your decision. Well, the thing is, he's an insurance salesman, so there's no such thing as sincerity. Let's get that right Let's out of the way. <laughs> I'm willing to give this guy the benefit of the doubt here, Bill. Why? I don't know, because I met him once and he seemed like a nice fellow. I guess that's... God, you're easy. Yeah. You I got guess. round feet and you go down so quick. Yeah, I guess. Like I said, I met him once and he seemed like a really nice fellow. I, I've... I, I've, I've worked with Greg many many years ago and, and I know him and the thing is the stupidity this is as stupid as Jimmy Swagger getting caught with a $25 hoe you know all the money he takes from those sheep that sit in his pews he could have bought a supermodel but instead he's out on airline highway he's got the only town car in the parking lot that's you know less than a year old and the, the gross stupidity is what offends me. I don't even care if he's sincere or not. The gross stupidity, what is going on in your ego, in your psyche, that you think that everybody needs to know your insulting thoughts? What is going on in, see that's the measure right there. Mm -hmm. That's the measure. Anybody that's that stupid that commits something like this to writing and figures that they're just going to slide in it. 
You see about the school board member that had to resign over his wife's post? Yep. She called Kamala, uh, she used a lot of invective and vulgarities, and she's blaming it on her medication. I don't believe that for a second. You, you can go to the pharmacy and get racist pills? I would like a, I would like a year's supply of racism, please. Well, Roseanne said she'd take an Adderall and she was getting all freaky and Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best thing to do is see this thing, if especially when you're if you're on meds or you've been using a recreational substance or having some wine or something, you just just do that. I mean it's just, just do that. It's just I've had to learn to do it. I'm spending less time on Facebook than I ever the, ever since Facebook began. I'm spending less time. You on don't Facebook. need to do this stuff. You know what? I have been in the public eye and doing television and radio and advising people in public relations, being the spokesperson for per people. I've been doing it for more than 35 years. And I don't believe for one minute that anybody needs to see what I have to say on Facebook. And I damn sure wouldn't fill it with vulgarities, misspellings, and racially tinged comments. I just want to offer this before we go to commercial, to all the other potential Greg Tremontines out there, nobody really cares what you think. Until you do especially, something like this. <laughs> especially the guy you're saying that comment, especially the guy you're saying that comment to. Nobody ever changes anyone's mind on Facebook. Doesn't happen. All right, quick commercial, we'll be right back. Exiles TV. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2 as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. No! Surprise, something good has finally happened in 2020. Yours truly, The Clarence Bug Show, gets to be with you every day of the week. That's right, 11 to 12 every weekday. And, of course, The Exiles right in front of yours truly from 10 to 11, yours truly 11 to 12. So now it's appointment viewing five days a week here on The Pelican, The Clarence Bug Show. The only thing missing is you. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Right now, during the Team Honda Upgrade event, get a new 20 Accord Sport for just $309 a month with no money down, no first payment, and no security deposit. It's time to upgrade to your new Honda at Louisiana's number one new car dealer, Team Honda, on Segan Lane. Hi, 
Hi, you. Welcome back. It's Exiles TV. Glad to have you with us for this hour here on uh, Thursday morning, the 12th of November. I was uh, just checking in. Etta, uh, the, um, I can't read, I've lost track now, 29, 29th 29. named storm yeah. of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, it it came ashore uh, in uh, what we would consider the, the Florida Peninsula. Um, and uh, is now working its way out towards the east coast, where and, and this is go out to see it. This is its fifth landfall, right? And it's 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 apparently not done yet. It's still a solidly a tropical storm as it crosses the Florida landmass. It's like good God Almighty! But I think the good news is, uh, barring anything unforeseen, I don't see another U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> and to probably, you know, headed out off the East Coast, headed off of Florida towards Bermuda or whatever, and going, whoa, wait, I forgot Louisiana. No, no. <laughs> no, but first, it's got to stop by Haiti. Because everybody hits Haiti. Yeah, you got to hit Haiti. You got to hit Haiti. Yeah, you have to be. But uh, maybe Etta, you know, has not heard that there is a wonderful new cocktail on the uh, at Spirits on Bourbon Street called the Resurrection Cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about Better than the hand grenade. What about Theta? What's Theta doing? Uh, Theta is, uh, somebody got it just completely wrong yesterday, so well, Theta is out, out there in the Atlantic off the coast of Africa and it's slowly moving our way. Theta, very strangely, Bill, is headed east towards Africa. This storm formed over water. No, it formed over water and it is headed east towards the, and that's virtually unheard of. Sure, but then again, right. very late in the season, a lot of different stuff setting up out there. We have another system down just north of the, uh, the northern coast of South America and Central America uh, in the Southern Caribbean, and it's expected to reach named storm strength as well, but they don't think that this one's gonna do anything that would affect the Gulf Coast at all. So, um, uh, uh, a story that we've been looking at, another murder story, of course, and this is one that happened at the, uh, the Lark apartment complex, mm -hmm. where the 27-year-old, uh, his name was Dylan Cluhart, was dead at the scene and someone else was transported to a hospital with life-threatening injuries where they yes. remain. They have made an arrest. Uh, they arrested uh, a man named Daniel Ellis. Uh, he is 25 years old. They arrested him on a charge of first-degree murder. Uh, they're not seeking anybody else as far as I can tell. Um, there have been some comments made uh, that, as you and I talked about very briefly off the air, if the drug trade is moving closer to their customers at LSU by getting into these apartment complexes very close to LSU, mm -hmm. and that may have something to do with it. Mm. Uh, Cluart was not an LSU student, even though most of the inhabitants of um, of those apartment complexes close to LSU are in fact LSU have students. Have they established that, he, that, that the victim was a drug dealer or was they he have a drug not, customer? Have they we, do have we know anything about Have not like established that? anything uh, as far as I know. Uh, the, there's, there's a couple different kinds of things that happen. You get sometimes uh, a dispute between the customer, you know, the seller and, and the customer mm -hmm. that leads to gunfire. Sometimes you get the customer comes back and says, I'm unhappy with this. Give me my money back, and that leads to gunfire. Um, I can see situations where um, you, you might have a, uh, a a seller come and you know you owe me money. I spotted you product, and now you owe me money. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, but you're right. Now they're getting where they, for convenience sake, they're moving right into the neighborhoods or nearby where. Your customer bases. They don't put and a lot. They don't put a lot of Seven Elevens out on country roads now, with no population center around. All right. Now that's a cash business, and it would it would seem to me that it's it would be very difficult to to, to hide. You got to you got to somehow legitimately hide that cash or or launder that cash if you're a smart salesperson, because I can't see the Lark Apartments going. Okay, um, that'll be a twenty six hundred dollar deposit plus your first month's rent, and the guy whipping out a roll of hundreds. They go, hey, I'm home now. Nobody, nobody wants to take cash anymore. Yeah. Large amounts of cash indicate drug activity to most people. Well, I mean, banks have to report it. You go and you deposit cash, the banks have to report that. I, I had it happen to me 
and it was over $300 and we actually had a little discussion. I have uh, a, a prepaid American Express card that I like to keep some money in for incidental expenses. Mm -hmm. And I will go and I'll put 100 or $200 in it every three or four months, you know. And I actually went to add $300 to this account uh, at a CVS. And this clerk, who was about 20 years old, starts questioning me about the origin of my money. And I said, what are you doing? She said, well, we have to inquire about cash transactions over a certain amount. I said, yes, and do you know what that amount is? It's not $300, it's a thousand. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is none of your freaking business. And by the way, I saw a guy, two people in front of me in line who bought about $260 worth of merchandise and he whipped off three $100 bills and you didn't say a thing to him. Interesting. So are you trying to be a junior G-man or just a pain in my butt? Maybe it's because you look so Italian, Bill, that she just assumed that you were some kind of a, you know... Well, you know what? You know, she, mafioso kind of a... She could have womaned up then and asked me that, couldn't she? You you mafia? Yeah, I'm mafia. No, you don't say it that way. You say... You a wise guy? You say, no, no, I mean, you're a friend of ours. You say... He's, but you're, he's a friend of ours. You're right. I was going to jump in when you said three hundred dollars. It's like, well, it's not supposed to be. In, it's, it's a thousand. It's a thousand. You walk in with a thousand or more in cash, and they they, they have to ask you questions. I, I had a guy once. Uh, uh, it was a client of mine, and uh, he uh, was doing this uh, when when the lottery was first approved in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. He had this computer program that was kind of fun. It was interactive. You could load it. Yeah. And it would help you pick lottery numbers. Okay. And it, it had a lot of graphics and music. And it was a really neat kind of program, not whether it helped you win or not. But he wanted a television commercial. And he came from Alexandria to Baton Rouge. And I, I told him what I thought it would cost for the TV commercial. And we actually did it. You know, he had the graphics from, uh, from the computer and all that. And, and we had an announcer. And, and we actually did it all in one afternoon for this guy. And unlike some people we know, he actually wanted to pay for his production. And... <laughs> Did he whip out a roll of well, it was, C notes? It was $4,200. And he said, I hope you don't mind. I didn't know how much it was going to be, so I'm going to pay you in cash. Now, we finished up Friday at about 7 p.m. And he counts me out $4,200 bills. And I'm like, wow. And, you know, I, I give him a receipted invoice and all that. He goes mm -hmm. on his way. I've got the spot. I'm going to take it over to the television station on Monday. And now I was like, what am I going to do with this money? So bring it home, kind of bury my briefcase with the money in the back of my closet. Monday morning, I go to the bank. And I mean, they were like, where did you get this money? I said, a client paid me to do a television commercial. They said, in cash? And I said, yeah, here it is. They said, well, where did he get it? I said, how in hell would I know? This is not someone who is known to you? That was my mistake, saying a, a client you know, paid me eat from out of town. And the bank manager, she's, she was really terrific. I'd known her since she was a teller. She came over and said, her name was Lisa. She said, come in my office. She said, do you understand that you basically just gave them a perfect scenario for money laundering? That your client came in from out of, out of town, town and paid you in cash and then disappeared into the night? And I said, yeah. I said, so you're going to accept the deposit? And she said, oh, yeah, we're going to take the oh, yeah. deposit. <laughs> oh, sure, we'll take the $4,200. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's like, here I am, I this wad of cash. And I got people asking me questions like they're the, the United States Secret Service. That's why, you know, you see in movies and stuff where there's, a, you know, like the gym bag full of cash. Mm -hmm. Great, big, thick, you know, with, with bands around it and stuff. It's like, you're going to have God's own time trying to spend that money. Well, I don't know if I should say this or not. The, e the easiest thing to do, the easiest thing to do is to take... Nine thousand, ninety-two hundred, somewhere in that neighborhood. Go to the casino, plunk your money down, and say, "Give me ninety-two hundred dollars worth of chips." 
walk around a little bit. Lose $150 and lose then go $150 cash out. Lose $150 and go cash out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, I'm sorry, that's just an easy way to do it. Um, we're coming up on halftime here. We're going to take and a quick You're break. not even going to ask me why I know that? No. Like I said. Good. Good. Mind your P's and Q's. He's a wise guy. Over None of your business. His name ends with a vowel. What am I supposed to do? None of your business. <laughs> Mind your P's and Q's. Hey. How do I know this? Hey, what do I look like? Some jamoke? I don't know nothing. I was home watching TV. That's right. Uh, Governor and Jeff Landry squaring off figuratively in court today. We're going to talk about that a little bit. When I we think return. they should actually wrestle. I think so, too. Or at least have one of those hissy slap fights. That would be fun. <laughs> Exiles TV coming up in just a moment. Where did we go wrong? <laughs> Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. By all standards, he is a champion for consumers. Because of Public Service Commissioner Eric Spremetta, our utility rates are 35% less than the national average, the lowest in all of America. He saved ratepayers over $8 billion. Commissioner Scrametta brought us more reliable power plants and energy-efficient solar fields. Public Service Commissioner Eric Scrametta. Keep the commissioner who keeps our rates low. Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with the Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And talk 1073 FM. Check local listings for times. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. You, you know, uh, we need to do a little obituary, if you don't mind, before we, uh, uh, before we talk yeah, about certainly, certainly. Uh, Reverend Lee Wesley passed away oh. uh, um, on, on Wednesday. Um, he was one of the founders of Together Baton Rouge, but he was a pastor at two different churches uh, for a very, very, very long time. He served in, in the state Rouge. legislature for quite he some time. He served in the legislature. Uh, he was always, uh, along with people like uh, 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 Reggie Pitcher and, and some of these others, he was always involved in nonpartisan community benefiting events. And I will tell you, he was on our show when we were on the radio three times that I can remember. Uh, yes. Once about Together Baton Rouge, but twice during the aftermath of the Alton Sterling shooting. Mm -hmm. 
And he faced some very, very difficult questioning from us and from our callers with a great deal of humility, aplomb, and he kept his composure and he was a great guest. He really truly was. He was a terrific guest and I do remember that day he was getting some, some people were right on the edge of being racially insulting. Yes. Some they of were. our callers at the time and he uh, he handled it like a champ, like a gentleman. And uh, he, he truly was one of the bright spots not just in the religious community in this city but in the civically involved community there are a lot of people who say well he was involved with things that you know that's part of that side the fact of the matter is if you are involved and you're doing it honestly with your head held high it doesn't matter whether or not I support the same community groups that you support the fact is that you're taking time from your life and your congregation and your family and you're out there trying to make some sort of a difference. So God rest you, Reverend Wesley, yeah. uh, and uh, you will certainly be missed here in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. um, as we speak, I'm thinking court proceedings are probably underway right now uh, as the um, state's attorney general has taken the governor to court. Uh, lawyers from Landry's office are in court today with Republican lawmakers who want COVID-19 restrictions put on pause in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Lawmakers petitioned to end restrictions back in October. The governor basically uh, wiped his nose with that petition. Yeah. Um, notice I said nose because we're on TV. Um, he was unconstitutional. It was a big pe petition. He might have been able to wipe something else. Yeah, his position was that the petition was unconstitutional and it doesn't have the power of law, and so he decided to ignore it. Now the judge gets to decide, does that petition, which was only signed by members of the House of Representatives. Yes. Um, I thought resolutions, it's not a resolution, though. It's a petition. Yeah. So it's, it's House members asking the governor, asking the governor, Look, we're all here and we want you to stop this thing. Well, what's interesting is there's only one little, one little section of the, the, the Louisiana Code that allows that. And it's, it's meant for a doomsday scenario mm -hmm. because it specifically quotes Talks about surviving, surviving members. I mean, clearly it's, yeah. it's meant for an emergency, but it's also meant for an emergency or, you know, where something terrible has happened. But now, here's the thing that I always get confused about, and there are people who tell me, so does General Landry, isn't his constitutional obligation when it comes to courts of law to vigorously defend, no matter what his personal opinion is, any laws, edicts, resolutions, or executive orders that come out of the state government of Louisiana? Isn't that by, what he is constitutionally required to do? By definition, what you're saying is true. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm no, legal, I'm no legal expert, but what is the Attorney General, what is the Attorney General's job? The Attorney General's job is, does he serve the governor or does he serve the people of Louisiana? This is the question. And Attorney General Landry feels he's doing this in service to the people of Louisiana. Well, he, and he may be because right. Because the governor is not acting in compliance with he, the people He may of be right in his opinion, but his, his portfolio under the Constitution is he is to defend any laws, edicts, resolutions, or orders that are lawfully given by any governing body or the legislature or the executive branch. See, and, and you know, and I don't want people to think that he's supposed to serve the, the governor. No attorney general is supposed to serve the governor. He's supposed to serve the people. No, he's supposed to serve the penal code. The law. The code, yes. He's supposed to serve what is in the books. Uh, and that's what makes it kind of funny. Uh, but, you know, it, it, you know he's, had to, he's had to spend a lot of time and a lot of damn money defending a lot of laws that everybody knew when they wrote them in the legislature were unconstitutional, but they were doing it to pander to a certain group and because they felt good. Mm -hmm. 
And he has, it is his duty to defend these and say in front of the court, yes, they are constitutional, even though he knows that they're not. Well, there are plenty of people out there who think that Attorney General Landry has basically begun campaigning for governor in the next ele in, in the next well, gubernatorial election what? cycle, which is what, 23? 23? Yeah, that's okay. 23. Uh, he, made, he, no, he made no mistake that he wants to be governor one day. He, he, didn't, he didn't mislead anybody. Yeah, but... Do you use your current job as a platform for your campaign? No, that's, your next job? that's where you have a problem. And is that, in fact, what he's doing? That is an accusation being made against him. But is that, in fact, what he's doing? Or is he doing this in good faith? Well, I'm going to tell you this. I, being no legal expert, I'm still going to make a prognostication. This thing's going to fall on the governor's side. Oh, yeah. Well, here's the, the judge thing. is going to decide. Yeah, the governor gets to make this is an emergency, and the governor gets to decide what happens during an emergency. I, I don't think it will come to this, but as a purely theoretical manner, you know, attorney generals can be impeached, mm -hmm. uh, and it has happened many times in the United States that attorneys general have been impeached. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that I think General Landry has to worry about is if he, in his arguments he is so vociferous that it looks like he is deliberately abandoning what his constitutional obligation is, I don't think it'll come to this. But that is when somebody can pull the string and say, okay, you're turning the box. Now, I don't think it will come to that, and I don't think that anybody in the legislature has the stomach for trying to impeach a, a seated attorney general over what is basically, this is a, a political statement that's playing out in a court. Uh, it, yeah, theater. It's yeah, theater. It's theater. But uh, I will be immensely surprised, Bill, if the judge finds for the attorney general's office. You know, it, it, you, you got to be careful what you ask for when you're in that position. You know, and, and the thing about Attorney General Landry that kind of confounds me a little bit. He has moments of absolute precision clarity that get followed a week later, a month later, by moments of political theater. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that you were there, but I was there when he personally read the complete report on the death of Alton Sterling. And the lobby of the AG's office was full of people. Many of them were upset. And he sat there and he read that report that he and his staff prepared painstakingly. And he was absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I actually just found my hard copy of the report a week ago and I read through it. And it is as good a report as any attorney general's office has prepared anywhere in the United States, in my opinion. And then, you know, after that, there will be political theater mm -hmm. from the same podium. The same and everybody goes, oh, come on, you know we can't do that. Yeah. Uh, we have some friends that are um, attorneys. And uh, one of them is fond of saying, if you want to hide something from the attorney general, the best place to put it is inside a law book. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a little unkind. I mean, that's his words, not mine. But yeah. that's, I mean, so let's just say that it's there, he has peers who don't think much of him as an attorney. Um, well, and, as a politician, though, I think he's got a lot going on. Well, and, and, and I think that uh, this is not his last office, although, you know what? Being attorney general is not a bad gig, and if you're really good at it, it can be your terminal office, and that's not so bad. And it really isn't. An awful lot of things pass through the attorney general's office. Well, and, you certainly can swing a lot of weight as the attorney general of a state. Maybe not as much as you can as the governor, but well, boy, it, it's a powerful position. You also get the opportunity to do a lot of good when you're the attorney general. Mm -hmm. You can actually, you're the first step right before the door you go through to right wrongs. By the way, speaking on his behalf, let's, let's say something positive, as you have just done about Attorney General Jeff Landry. Under his leadership, there have been so many sexual predators identified, arrested, prosecuted, and sent to prison. There have been children rescued from human trafficking under his leadership. Oh yeah, he, he's and got the a leadership great of special teams under his office. Yeah, he's got a really good child pornography and online predator uh, division, top top of the class, best mm -hmm. in the nation. And so, that's something he instituted, by he the way. Is, by by no means is he a failure as attorney general. Um, 
but I just think that this is one hill that uh, that he and his platoon are not going to be able to, to, you know, yeah. to take. It's going to be a tough one. I mean, you take on the governor, you're, that's, that's a powerful well, position. You, you take on the governor's proclamation because of a slapdash, not fully ratified petition, you're going to be in trouble. Well, but, but how do you argue your case, though? I mean, does he have the hard science to say deaths are down, you know, it's not as inno it, it's 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 not as innocuous as we thought. It's you know. Um, well, if he does, I'm sure he's going to present it. So we will see, won't we? Time know. for a break. We'll be back to yep. wrap things up in just a moment. Caught spiders. Service. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Nothing could ever bring me down. Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down. Taste the feeling. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Louisiana's number one Honda dealer welcomes you to our biggest clearance sale of the year, the Happy Honda Day sales event. Get year-end clearance pricing on over 900 new Hondas, plus a complimentary lifetime powertrain warranty with every new Honda. Save thousands on your new Honda right here at Team Honda. Hi, business owners. Phase three. Woohoo! But do your customers know you're back? Well, that's where the Clarence Bug Show and Pelican Broadcasting can help. Right now, we've got great rates on advertising packages to help you get the word out. Shoot me an email at bugsclarence at gmail.com. Or better yet, call me up. I'd love to talk with you. 225-485-6839. Let's get together and make Phase 3 the best it can possibly be. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com uh, In our remaining moments of Exiles TV before Clarence Bugs, Kevin, let's talk about your ding -a -ling. <laughs> Not much to talk about. So I've heard. Uh, <laughs> Walk right into that, didn't you? Yeah. You got an honest reaction. Well, go ahead. The reason I ask yeah. is you and I have both done this. Uh, the Salvation Army has got a lot of their kettles in storage because they don't have enough bell ringers. You know, this time of year, 
Uh, you see them at retail locations, yeah. and they're ringing the bell, and see they've got the big the Walmarts. Yeah, the big red kettle, mm -hmm. and taking your donations, large and small, uh, to fund their Christmas operations. Uh, and according to Major Don Techotes, who now heads Salvation Army in this area, mm -hmm. he said, "We're struggling." We're struggling hiring employees to be in our family store. We're struggling to get volunteers in to ring the kettlebells. Uh, demand, by the way, for the services they provide in, in just social service and mental health assistance has increased 155% since oh, 2019. I, and I can also think that they've probably had a spike in demand for their services over the last eight months or so. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and, I, I have tried to... Uh, I've tried to bring donations to their store, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I just went through the closet. You know, I'm getting a little portly, so I went through the closet, got rid of everything I couldn't wear anymore, and it was on a dual, quite a bit of clothing. Um, but I went by, and they had a sign on the door said, this, this one right over here by uh, on Corsi Boulevard, it said, we don't have enough people to yeah, open that's the doors. It, it so. wasn't because of COVID. It was because they no staff. So if you would like to volunteer to ring a bell, they, they need to raise this year about $220,000 in those kettles. And that's uh, a little under what they normally raise, but they've adjusted it for 2020. Uh, call Salvation Army. They would love to hear from you uh, and, uh, and give you a shift uh, uh, ringing bells. They do so much in the community. And it wouldn't be Christmas without seeing them on every street corner, that's right? right? And when people put money in that pot, make sure you tell them thank you. That's I make sure I carry cash just for that just purpose for that. the Ab Absolutely. Uh, we will be back with you next time. Clarence Bugs is, Bugs is coming up in just a few minutes. Be well. Take care. And may God bless you.